So guys, I'm Woody here. so in this video, as promised, I want to talk to you about the tracking technology for the Oculus Quest called Oculus Insight. Get a little more in detail and also check out the dead and buried experience that we had in the VR arena at OC5. That was an amazing experience. So describe it a little better to let you understand how the tracking works, what are the limitations and stuff. So let's get right to it, shall we? I want to start talking about the dead and buried experience that we had in OC5. That was a great representation of the technology, not, real, not really something that we're going to see in a consumer or we're going to see probably not even in an arcade way very, very soon. We're talking about just a project to show really what are the limits of the technology and something that Oculus itself told us uh, during the demo. Uh, this is not a representation of something that is going to be real, this is just to show what is the potential, what are the limit, what are possibilities the this inside out technology gives compared to all the other technology that are out of the market, including the one from Oculus itself. As you can see over here there was a big arena that was like 15,000 feet, so very very big where we were three against three and we were like just shooting each other in this far west game that is well known already uh, on the Oculus store or also in the Oculus Go store. The graphic was pretty good, was more similar to the one on the Oculus Go than the one on the Oculus Rift, so nothing like major, but the experience itself was so immersive that nobody really cared about the graphic of the people and stuff. Uh, it was just amazing to be able to just move around, run around, crouch, uh, take cover, shoot, like a, whatever, jump, even if they didn't really want us to do it. In the middle there were just a wide area where nobody was moving and uh, in the virtual uh, reality game was uh, there were like trails for the train, so we weren't able to really cross them to get to the other position of the other team. But everything was in real time, so you were seeing exactly the same person in the same position on the opposite side of the map and it was represented by a far west character but instead was uh, one of the people that you were lined up before to get to the experience. It was very very neat. I have to say that the tracking was always on point. I didn't have any problem at all with the tracking moving around and also the controllers were very very good as we said during the, the review of the Oculus Quest. But let's get how this was working, why we had such a wide area without any additional sensor stuff. And here there was a little trick. So the inside out tracking technology means that you don't need external sensor, you don't need opti tracking like the one that you use like in the void, you don't need constellation like the one that is used by the Oculus, you don't need lighthouses like the one that you use it by Valve. Everything is contained itself like it was working with Wisdom Mixed Reality and we've seen already many videos on this channel uh, where I'm showing like the tracking of all the apartment and how to uh, see through the cameras of these. But with Oculus it's a little different because we have four cameras first so the field of view will be much much wider. You're gonna be able to track your controller in a better way in uh, different positions and that's very very nice because with Windows Big Strike, we always had the problem that when uh, the controllers were getting out of the tracking, they were just uh, standing still in place, and that was happening a lot because of the field of view of the camera. And even if the Windows Mixed Reality was using some tricks, like using the velocity and acceleration to guess the position of the controllers in space while they were like still movement, and that was actually working pretty well. And it's the same thing that the Oculus goes and do with their controller. It was happening very, very often that the controller was just snapping back because out, like standing still, uh, the weird movement wasn't responding and then going back in front of the camera. Here will happen less because we have four cameras, two that are gonna point straight and the other two that are gonna point like more in the wide way, more in the external way. And I'm pretty sure that the ones that are pointing externally are the one on the bottom because they're gonna be able to see better all your body and do a better tracking of what is the floor. And you notice also that they need a tracking from the floor because all the floor in the arena was taped uh, with like stripes of tape and different shape because the tracking, what it does is to 
find like grabbing point visually in the room. That means that in wide areas where there's nothing, they're not gonna be able to track because they don't have a wall, they don't have uh, something particular in the floor or a ceiling to grab on, like lights or square TV or furniture and stuff. But they're gonna have nothing. Also in the complete darkness, they're not gonna be able to track because without visual, there's no tracking with the inside out tracking using cameras. And that's a matter of fact. Now, I have to say that for my experience with the Windows Mixed Reality, even like a slight amount of light would be enough to have a good tracking. And uh, with the Quest, also the face, uh, your fear too, uh, was in a kind of a dark environment and the tracking was working just fine. So there was no problem at all for that. I have to say that the tracking was always responding in the right way uh, and you were able really to move around, do everything uh, you wanted to do. But I have to point out another thing about this arena. So the fact that all the objects that were inside, so all those boxes uh, that were like represented in the virtual and the real world, in the virtual world were like boxes, uh, wooden boxes, and the real world were just like a cardboard boxes, they weren't really tracked by the headset. Probably they were used like anchor point, but the program that the tracking itself is not detected things that are inside the boundaries of the tracking. So what you have to do, as you do now with the Oculus, you do now with the Vive, you do now with the Windows Mixed Reality, you're gonna have to start and do a setup and just walk around your room and um, make a boundary. Yes, the camera gonna recognize all the furniture and what's around, but they're gonna just recognize it to use them to have a grabbing point and visual for the tracking and not really to tell you, hey, there is a, a chair there, like be careful. That is not gonna happen, not yet at least. It's something that they're working on, but probably we don't have enough processing power right now with the Snapdragon 835 to do that. So we're gonna maybe have to wait for the next generation. But I'm pretty sure that they're gonna keep improving this thing because Inside Out Tracking is the future of VR, is the future of tracking because nobody wants to drill in the walls to put like sensor around and stuff. Everything should be just contained and easy and uh, consumer ready. And that's the way to do. Uh, you're seeing also with the IR kit from Apple that they were actually using with the iPad to record everything. Uh, the cameraman was going around the area and uh, just record what was going on in the virtual world while it was, it was working in the real world. And that's just unbelievable and amazing. That brings a lot of possibility. Imagine in an arcade, you wanna share the experience with somebody, you have the camera uh, coming with you and showing everything in mixed reality. In that way, it's gonna be more appealing for the other people to get in and have more fun and stuff. Just amazing. Also, there's something that I'm pointing at the beginning of the experience in the Dead and Burn Arena. There was another feature, very, very nice, that was mixed reality. So you were able to see through the cameras, these black and white cameras of the Oculus Quest and just walk around with those. The refreshing rate was like half a second of the stereoscopic view. So it was stereoscopic, you were able to understand the distance of your hands from your face or of the object, but the stereoscopical view was like a, getting like a, a refresh rate of half a second when the regular view, flat view, was having a, a regular camera refresh rate. So you were able to go around like in 60 frames a second, I believe, or 72, like is the screen, without getting sick. But to understand the sense of depth, you were having to wait a second, so you had really to go like as in steps. Uh, by the way, there's not really something that is gonna be in the final product. They show the demo also in the keynote and they show it also the part of the video in my Oculus Quest review, so check it out if you didn't already. And uh, it's something that just gives more potential to future application where you're gonna be able to blend mixed reality, virtual reality, augmented reality all together and do like different experience in this mix uh, virtual space and they're just very interesting and the potential for the developers is just endless really. Talking about the tracking of the controller, it's using the same method that it's using with the Oculus Rift controller that actually here when there's ring there are AR LED that are not like the one on the Windows Mixed Reality. 
that is over there, whatever. Uh, mixed reality, there were LED, there are like, uh, they make light. Uh, these one are like, uh, are completely invisible to the human eye, but the cameras are gonna be able to detect it and give the position in base of where it is in the space. Of course, I'm saying that uh, probably the camera on the bottom are pointing more in a wide way because when I was trying to put my hand on the back over here uh, I didn't have problem with the tracking instead many people were saying that they're having problem putting the controller over their heads so I understand the fact that they want something to point point straight also to have a virtual vision if they want a pass-through camera uh, and that's the best decision actually and uh, it's not perfect yet of course but it's just amazing like Having four cameras are much better it is than having just the two front-facing camera that we have on Windows Mixed Reality. And when it gets out, it will respond in the same way as Windows Mixed Reality, where it's gonna freeze in space if there's no movement and you're gonna have just 3D OF. So you have an accelerometer inside to be able to understand the Z, the Y and the X uh, axis of the movement. And here we have it guys, this is like a really, really a step forward in the right direction for the tracking and I think there's no way back to the external sensor right now because it's so good already in this way and they can just improve it, they had other six months to improve it even better and also now they're using just the computing power of a smartphone that is like pretty much nothing compared to with uh, our PC or stuff. So imagine when you're gonna be able to use inside of tracking, using AI, using machine learning and everything to be able to have an even better tracking than one that we have right now. Anyway guys, that's all for the video. If you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, dislike. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR and tech in general for more about the quest and more about everything VR uh, can pass in your mind because here we are to cover it. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.